just everything on the news was, you know, it was bad, very bad. Being in Florida tarpon fishing all summer, uh, not being able to be here and, and see for myself what was going on was tough. I was honestly worried about my, my red fishery. This is such a special place uh, to me and many other people. Um, the shrimpers, the crabbers, uh, you know, the oystermen. I mean, they just got shut down. You know, but as soon as I got back from tarpon fishing, I was able to get out on the marsh. Uh, I, I checked all the wintertime spots that I normally go out to 20, 25 miles out. There was no oil. I've been coming down here a long time and uh, always have had uh, great days on the marsh. I don't think the oil hurt this fish at all. Do you? Not at all. <laughs> You know, because I love being on the water. You know, I love, I love my career. Look at all the spots on this one. Yeah, I'm trying to catch fish over here. You know, Greg, I don't believe the marsh has suffered any to speak up from this, uh, from this oil. What people have to realize is that the the marsh is huge and. Not everything got affected, and very little bit of the marsh got affected. The fact that we're fishing the day after Katrina plus five years is pretty cool too. It wasn't even a natural disaster. That was that was the worst thing. You know, when Katrina came through, there's nothing anybody could do about it. Um, but with the whole oil thing, that could have been prevented. Man could have ruined the marsh. Hey man, they call me the professional, not you, dude. The fight of a big redfish is sort of like being hooked to a UPS truck. They just do not give up. That's a monster right there, buddy. Redfish are active. I mean, the redfish are covered up in the marsh right now. Uh, the fishery is alive. It's alive as it's ever been. And, uh, you know, we had a tough, cold winter last winter. Uh, we still caught a lot of big fish, but I think this coming fall winter redfish season is gonna. <laughs> I think it's going to be great because you go out on the marsh and everything you see is alive. Got a little story about me and Greg Dini fishing. Got this fish in, put the photos and everything. Greg says, that's a good fish for you. I mean, I hadn't been on the polling platform two seconds and up pops a 30 pound. And of course, you know, the moral of that story is, is uh, you know, I'm the best guy. You know, I put him on the fish and he proved. <laughs> and he made a single cast and we hooked a 42 pound redfish. Those fish make me nervous. Uh, I, if my knees are shaking a little bit, I, I'm the happiest I, I could possibly be that day. You know, from a fly fishing standpoint, you know, the Louisiana marshes has really become a destination fishery. I'm gonna continue to fish the marsh because it's a special place and it's a special place to bring people, you know, to experience the best red fishing in the world, hands down the best red fishing in the world. Who the hell fly, fly fishes for redfish? Nobody. Nobody. You can't.
<laughs> Live fish for redfish. It's fucking too hard. It's, you, mean, just, you mean like that? What kind of flies do you throw at them redfish? Uh, Rapalos. <laughs> Now, you you personally will have a bloody good catch this time. Your greatest strength here is your passion for what you're doing. You're really into it. How you make your presentation, all of that stuff is going to be relevant and important. So work out, work out your plan. Tell me the fish that fly. <laughs> I didn't see you fish fly in the water. Perfect. All right. So do you think you can fly fish for great white? All things are possible. I like I like fishing in general. It's a peace of mind, bro. You don't talk to nobody. We can be fishing. You get in your own world. It's a piece of serenity, bro. For a moment, there you go. Once you go to catch a fish, you forget about everything in the world. You know, your old lady, your children, <laughs> your landlord, <laughs> you know, the bill. Them fish, you you go to catch you go to catch you some red. Go catch you some red. 